Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, to welcome. This is special edition, Christmas <laughs> edition, Hour of Power. We are so excited to celebrate together. Amen. We were here celebrating Thanksgiving together, and here we are at Christmas time already. <laughs> but we're yes. si- nothing. Yes. We're, the thing that's consistent is we're celebrating Jesus. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Yes. He's just worthy Thank of all the glory yes. and all the praise. And we're here tonight. Um, we're here to, to offer hope to the hopeless. Yeah, and we're here yeah. to, de- to declare uh, deliverance to the captive. Yeah, if there's yes, anything that yeah, you're yes, bound up with, that yes. you're uh, struggling with, Jesus is the answer. Yes. He came to be the Savior or the deliverer of the world. Yes. Oh my yes. goodness, glory. Amen. So we're here to de- sing about it. We're here to declare it. We're here to talk about yes, it. Amen. So you just join on in with us. Amen. 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 Join us. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. 
something that was just handed down through the ages, but it was a new name given by the angel from God. Hallelujah. There's something about that. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yes. Whatever you need, just call on the name Lord, of Jesus. Lord, I praise you for it. Lord. Thank you.
can trust Him. He is trustworthy and He is faithful. He will not lead you anywhere that He will not take care of you through Him. Trust Him.
kids were little just really small Edward made this and we told the kids and, and we adults as well took part and we told them to put something in it every year that they want to give to Jesus from them mm -hmm. it's never been open I've never opened it we've never read what Brian put in what Amber put in what I put in or Edward we've never opened them up and read them this is between us and Jesus it's something that we are trying to do like something we want to do that next year mm -hmm. that we want to give to Jesus. Yes, that's good. And something that's been on my heart um, here lately, and this is, I, I'm asking you tonight, what gift will you give this Christmas? Mm -hmm. What gift are you going to give from your heart this Christmas? And I was, as I was thinking about it, uh, God has just been leading me to the story of Job, and that seems kind of like a, like, why would you go to Job? You know what I mean? It's like, why would you go to Job at Christmas time? I mean, that's kind of a sad story. You know what I mean? And uh, and those of you, most of you probably know about the story of Job, and I'm just going to summarize it because there might be a few out there that, that maybe don't know the story of Job. And Satan came to God and wanted to, to basically uh, come against Job. Because he said to God, you just you you just put a hedge about him and protected him. That's why he serves you. That's mm -hmm. why he's a righteous man. Yeah. That's why he does good. Like like Satan might would come again to God about any of us and say, yeah. Well, you know, Sister Rhonda, she's 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 righteous and good because you put a hedge about her. You protected her. Mm -hmm. So Job came. Uh, Job, Satan came to God, and so God released. He pulled up that hedge, and he mm -hmm. gave Satan permission to to attack Job except to take his life. And so Satan began to, to take his possessions, began to take his servants yeah. and their story, the story, ways that that happened, that his possessions were taken, his servants were taken, his, even his very children, all his children were yeah. taken. And then not only that, it went a step further and still Job, still Job it re retained his integrity. Yes, ma'am. And so Satan came against even further and came against his health. Mm -hmm. And his health was affected. And in all this, Job had these friends. And this is what I want to get at because there's a certain verse I want you to look up. If you want to go to Job chapter 42, and, and you can read all of Job, but get to Job 42 and we're going to get to this verse. But he had these friends, and his friends came alongside him, but then his friends began to rebuke Job. Right. They began to rebuke him, and they began to... Um, they began to tell him, basically, Job, you need to repent. Yeah, exactly. You need to repent to yeah. God. Mm -hmm. They were rebuking him and telling him he needed to repent. And he needed to um, to get things right with God, basically, that he was being punished by God. Right. Which was not the truth. Uh, Job, God had released this to, to re basically to show to Satan, the, the man of integrity, mm -hmm. that Job was. Yes. But uh, So anyway, these are, these are the kind of friends that he had. And this is what the point I want to get to, because I want to get to a point in all of us, okay? Yes. These friends were coming against him, and Job could have had, 
It's like, let's say our hour of power team. Mm -hmm. Let's say one of us is going through a hard time. Right. And we, we expected Lisa and Rhonda and Emily and April to come alongside of us. But instead of that, they came against us. Mm -hmm. Accusing. Started accusing mm -hmm. us. Started, you know, do, doing uh, different things, pointing their finger at mm -hmm. us. And, and that would hurt. Oh, yeah. And so Job had every right at that moment. He had every right to hold bitterness and malice and unforgiveness towards mm -hmm. those friends. Yes, you know, like, what kind of friends are you? Yes. You know, here I am in the pit of despair, and you're coming against mm -hmm. me, pointing your finger at me and telling yes. me I need to repent and that I've, that I've sinned against God. Yes. And so they, he would have every right to feel that. But when I was reading in Job one day, I read this verse in Job 42 and verse 10, and it just really spoke to me. And I hope it'll speak to you tonight. Okay, yeah. It says in that verse, Job 42.10, the Job <clears throat> member has lost all of this, says, and the Lord restored Job's losses when mm -hmm. he prayed for his friends. And that just jumped out at me one day as I was reading that. I, 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 let me read again. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. You know, Job's friends were rebuked by God after all of this, mm -hmm. and they were told, you have to go make a sacrifice, and you have to go to Job and make a sacrifice and have Job pray for you. Mm -hmm. So they had to go to him, but the key was mm -hmm. the Lord restores Job's losses when he prays for his friends. Yep. And I... I was reading a commentary here, Enduring Word Commentary, and this is what I want you to get tonight. The Lord turned, it says in that commentary, yeah. and the Lord turned the captivity yes. of Job. Uh -huh. This is a suggested suggestion that the act of praying for his friends and restoring his relationship with them, in a sense, freed Job exactly. from yes. captivity. Uh -huh. So you're thinking all of this, so... Here, Job was the one captive. Mm -hmm. Why was he captive? He was captive because of his, of this strain in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes. And and if, if there's ever in our life any bitterness or malice right. or unforgiveness or mm -hmm. hatred mm -hmm. or yes. anger, and all of you listening out there, this is what I'm wanting to get at because we're we're getting way, ready to wind up this year. Yes. And you want to be thinking about what you want to give to Jesus. Yes. The greatest gift you can give to Jesus is if you are bound right now, mm. right now you're bound, right now you, as I'm speaking, I want you to be thinking, because there's somebody in your life, maybe more than one, that you're bound right now, because you are so angry at that person. You are so bitter towards that person. You hold malice towards them. Mm. I mean, when you even think about them, all these feelings yeah. come up yeah. in yes. you. You're, you're unforgiving. They're, they did something or they continue to do something and it's like there's no way I can forgive this person. And maybe there was an act or something that took place and you think there's no way, mm. no way I could forgive them for that. I am encouraging you to die, right. to give your gift to Jesus and yes. that is the gift of forgiving that person, forgiving those people because when you do it will set you Free. Yes, it will. If you if you want to go into this Christmas season and go into this new year and have a freedom that you've never experienced before, mm. this is the way to do Amen. it. It's by releasing yes. that person, by, by forgiving mm. that person. When we walk in bitterness, malice, hatred, and unforgiveness towards another, we are in captivity. Yes, we are. We cannot truly walk in freedom and the fullness. And this is what I would get because... You, I don't know about you, but I look at milestones and I'm looking at this year coming up and the new season in my life that God's bringing me into. And when you look at that, you want to walk in the fullness of that. Yes. You you don't want to, you know, be, be tied up as right. you're going into the new year. I'm all <clears throat> tied up because I've got all this junk going mm -hmm. on in me that I have not forgiven this person. Mm -hmm. I've not let it go. Amen. There's something that I get up in the morning and it's still... On my mind. It's yes. still in my heart. Right. I haven't let it go. It's holding me back from, from the fullness of what God has for me. And I want to encourage you, whatever that is tonight, whatever, whoever that person is, or whatever that action was, or whatever happened in your life, 
Tonight is the night for you to make a decision yes. that I am going to give Jesus this Amen. gift of because he gave me the gift of forgiveness. Amen. I'm going to give it to my brother or to my yes. sister or to my enemy. Yes. I want to read some verses. There's there's scriptures all throughout the word about us forgiving. Mm. I mean, yes. it's not Amen. just it's not it's not just one or two little scriptures. It's it, it would take me some time to go through them. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of scriptures that teach me that I am to forgive. Amen. So I have no, I'm without excuse. Exactly. I am without excuse, and, and I hate to say it, but you are without excuse. Amen. And the world will tell you right opposite. Exactly. They will tell exactly. you that you're justified in holding that grudge. Right. Or being mm -hmm. angry because of our humanism and because of mm -hmm. uh being in direct conflict sometimes with mm -hmm. the word of God. Mm -hmm. the, the simplicity of the word will set you free if you allow it to. Mm -hmm. But uh, the world don't see it that way. They see holding grudges and getting mm -hmm. back at them and that type thing. Exactly. Right. But, but forgiveness, oh my goodness, it will set you free. Amen. Just as you Amen. said. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so important. And I just felt so... <clears throat> I felt such an urgency that it's important right mm -hmm. now. Yes. I wanted to read in Mark 5 and 44. It says, uh, like I said, it's throughout the word, but I'm going to give you a couple scriptures. It's clear to me that God wants me to forgive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if I choose not to forgive, uh, I'm disobeying God. Exactly. exactly. I am disobeying God. If you choose not to forgive, you're disobeying God. Amen. If you choose to hold a grudge, you're disobeying God. Amen. Right. And Dana, I, mm -hmm. quickly, I want to say... Uh, uh, Jesus wants to do a gift exchange. <laughs> right. There you go. There you know, you if go. you only realize, mm -hmm. you know, not only just does Jesus require that of mm -hmm. us to forgive, but this great gift exchange, if you mm -hmm. only knew right. what you were giving mm -hmm. up, you're giving up this weight and this change yes. and this mm -hmm. negative stuff, and he's giving you, you've never felt mm -hmm. what he's about that to give freedom. you. Oh, right. man, it's yes. a great gift exchange. That right. joy, that peace. Oh, yes. my goodness. You know, I mean, who wouldn't want that? For exactly. Who wouldn't want that? Exactly. The joy and the peace that comes with Amen. forgiveness. But I say unto you in Mark in Matthew five forty four, love your enemies. That's pretty plain to me. Amen. Bless those who curse you. That's pretty plain. Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Sounds to me like he's talking about somebody there. That it's so easy for me to love April. She's good to me. Mm -hmm. I'm good to her. Yes, exactly. We're buddies. Absolutely. But this is saying what? Love your enemy. Mm -hmm. It's saying those ones that are cursing you, you're supposed to love them. You're yeah. supposed to bless, bless them. them. Yeah. And it's just very clear. It's very clear. I, I think we, we, we do exactly what Sister Rhonda said. Many times we justify. Yeah. We justify those things within mm -hmm. us. It's all... We're, we're trying to justify it. Yep. When, when we look at the word of God, it's so clear. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, Let all bitterness, yes. wrath, anger, mm. clamor, and evil yep. speaking be put away from you exactly. with all malice. Amen. Not part of the malice. Right. It says with what? All malice. Yes. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, yes. forgiving one another, yes. even as God in Christ forgave mm. you. Right. Again, very clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have to. We don't have to go look at all kinds of study books and study that out. Amen. It's just right there, in black and white, and it's very clear to us. And that scripture in Ephesians is very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. the Ephesians, I love that book. It's so yes. dear to me. But either right before or right after, and I think it's right before. This can happen by the renewing of your mind yeah. mm -hmm. in the spirit. Right. It is a it's a supernatural mm. occurrence. Uh, be, according to that scripture, it, it happens by the renewing of your mind. Yes, and we and we've talked about this in a number of times. You may there may be people watching that are hearing what we're saying. And they're saying, "How am uh -huh. I supposed yeah. to do this?" Yeah. Right. Amen. I mean, like, how could I possibly? love that person mm -hmm. how could i possibly forgive that person how yeah. could i possibly get past this mm -hmm. whatever this is right. but but we've talked about this numerous times it's a choice yes it is it's a choice you have to choose
to do it. And when you choose to do it, then God will enable you yes. to do it. He'll give you the power to do it, but you have to make the choice because mm -hmm. it's in black and white right here that we are to do it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to read on. Job did, in fact, I love this. Job did, in fact, pray for his friends. And when he prayed for his friends, it shows us through the word that God restored twice as much. Mm -hmm. You talk about a gift exchange. Yeah. <laughs> God restored twice as much as Job had mm -hmm. had previously. Mm -hmm. And it says, blessed the latter days of Job more mm -hmm. than the beginnings. Mm -hmm. So he was blessed more in the latter days than the beginning. And it was, it was that wonderful gift exchange when he prayed for his yes. friends mm -hmm. God gave him a gift yes, he did. That, that is beyond oh, yeah. beyond mm -hmm. beyond anything else you know it, it was it, because like we talked about that joy and that peace mm -hmm. that you have how many of you know I would rather have joy and have peace in my life than all these other things mm -hmm. that that we get tied Amen. up in That's right. yes. our possessions <clears throat> our, our, our prestige mm -hmm. Oh, our, yes. our, you know, all these things that could cause these problems yes. that we get tied up in, you know, so and so, oh, they, you know, they, they bumped me out at work and got the, you know, mm -hmm. got the position or these kind of things that people wrestle with mm -hmm. to have the joy and the peace yes. of God. Amen. It's so much more important Absolutely. to go through life with that. So, do you mind if I go say ahead. No, I don't know if there are any young ladies watching tonight and hearing this but moms if you will if you could teach this right to right. your daughters yeah. about forgiveness mm -hmm. and not uh, being uh, so ruled by how the world feels about how you know show them in the word mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and, and cut down on the drama Come yeah. on. you know that that young girls so oh yes yeah, yeah but if if we could only learn to forgive yes. and to let it go how wonderful our life would be mm. from a young age right you know, so i just felt that's, like that's important that I, i'm yeah. glad you did because i know being in the school system mm -hmm. throughout the years and and being around young people mm -hmm. there is so much drama Especially middle school age yeah, and into yeah. high school, it's mm -hmm. like drama, drama. And, and I think you're so right. As parents, we yeah. need to learn to to speak into mm -hmm. their lives and help mm -hmm. them to know how to deal exactly. with all this drama. Exactly. What's what's God's way to deal exactly. with exactly yes. with the drama? Yes. So I encourage you, as the Word encourages you, to get out of captivity this Christmas. I want you to choose to walk in forgiveness and experience the freedom that God mm -hmm. wants to give to you. By making that choice to just walk in forgiveness, the make that gift exchange tonight <laughs> as we're as we're sharing and when we pray in the end. If you if you need to do that, you can do it tonight. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, "Well, let me think about this. Let me ponder on this." Mm -hmm. You can do it tonight, tonight and choose tonight. Whoever that person is, get them in your mind. Whatever are those people, that situation, get it in your mind and your heart and choose tonight. I choose. To forget exactly. and to walk in love, Amen. and God will help you. Yes, he That's will. what I needed to share tonight. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dana, you know, that was just so awesome mm -hmm. to be reminded of God's word about that subject. It's mm -hmm. so needful, and at this time of the year, when we're about to go into a new year, that's just wonderful. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> my topic tonight has to do very much with the season that we're in, the mm -hmm. Christmas season. Uh, I wanted to read from the scriptures in Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 35. <clears throat> and it says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, mm -hmm. Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. 
He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom. There shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Now, <clears throat> that, is, that is the beginning of, of the Christmas story, right. okay, mm -hmm. the, that we uh, traditionally mm -hmm. talk about. But um, the part that I want to talk to you about tonight is I want to uh, emphasize fear not. That's what my mm -hmm. topic yeah. is. And I'd like for you, if you can, to just sit there just a moment and try to imagine yourself in Mary's uh, place. Mm -hmm. Okay, here she is. She's a very young girl. She's like maybe 14 to 16 years old. I'm not really sure exact. But she's very young, and for an angel to appear before her yeah. is uh, very supernatural and could be very scary, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, But the angel reassured her right from the beginning, yeah. fear not. Right. You are highly favored uh, by God. And, and the angel came to her to let her know that her mission was to give birth yeah. to the Son of God. But uh, I wanted to then talk to you about the situation that Mary found herself in. In that time, um, she could have been brutally uh, killed by becoming pregnant before she was married. Yeah, right. Okay, they, they had very strict rules during that time and in that culture about that. And even Joseph was hesitant, but the angel came to him and reassured him to go ahead and carry on with the marriage. But they did not come together as man and wife until after the Savior was born. But um, I want you to think about now, the, she conceived of the Holy Spirit, and then Joseph decides because of the angel come to him that he will carry on with her. But from the very beginning, there were kind of shadows. Mm. You know, maybe we, we know that it was glorious, yeah. okay? But think about in Mary's situation how there could have been gossip oh, yeah. about her. Oh, yeah. There could have been people that were talking so ugly about her and maybe even shunning her. Mm -hmm. uh, think about Joseph's family, mm -hmm. you know, could, were they... I even, I think you're the one, aren't you, Dana, that brought up that maybe Joseph had family <laughs> mm -hmm. where they were going to fulfill their obligation for taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Why couldn't they stay with them yeah. instead of not having mm -hmm. a place to stay? Yeah. I believe you brought that yeah. out to us. So Mary, from the very beginning, being highly favored of God, she still had to go through these mm -hmm. situations, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Then they get to Bethlehem. And there's no place for them to stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here she is, and she gives birth in a barn or in a cave, wherever the animals were and the hay and all of that. Not a very uh, uh, hygienic place to have mm -hmm. a baby, okay? So from the very beginning, what we know to be a glorious thing to her, she had to to depend on the word that the angel gave her to fear mm -hmm. not. Yes. Right. Yes, you know, and even the even after Christ was born and the the glory of of the uh, shepherds learning about the birth and, yeah. and the proclamations of the angels giving praise and and that type thing, then not uh, maybe 2 years later there was another big scare. Mm. You know, it was just like there was one uh problem right after the other mm -hmm. that they faced. And still she was highly favored mm -hmm. by God. Right, right. I love her response. She said, be it unto me yes. according mm -hmm. to your word. Exactly. Right. Be it unto me. Be it I unto that. Mm -hmm. You talk about trust Amen. and faith. Yes. And when the angel said, fear not and then she goes through all of this that was one thing that I wanted to mm -hmm. major on was to be highly favored, God knew. He already knew mm -hmm. that she was going to trust him. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart, mm -hmm. that, that he knew that he could trust yes. Mary. 
with this mission to give birth and to do whatever it took to protect mm -hmm. the child of God. So um, I just wanted to talk to you tonight about children of God, we are highly favored, okay? Mm -hmm. We have been given the, God sent his son to, to be born, <clears throat> to live, to minister, and then to suffer persecution and die, but he rose again. Amen. What a gift that we have mm. been given. We are highly favored. Yes. But there will be times in our life that right. we may have to go through things. Right. That that we, you know, we just can't understand sometimes. Why? Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing, we feel like we're doing everything we can do. Yes. And still we face opposition. Mm. We, mm -hmm. we may face persecution. We may lose our job. We may lose our home. You know, there's so much that can happen, but when you have the assurance that God is with you and you are following his leading, you have no reason to fear. Amen. Mm -hmm. right. And but but it takes your focus being totally on his promises. Yes. His word is so full of promises mm -hmm. to us and we rely on those. We trust the promises mm -hmm. of God. And whatever situation we face he will be with us every step of the way. And it's only when we try to manipulate situations mm. that we get in trouble. Mm. And I and I know that we're supposed to use wisdom. We're supposed to, but we're supposed to seek God first on, above yes. everything. Amen. Well, I love that scripture. And I quote it to myself different times if I'm struggling in an area of trust. And that yes. is, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Mm -hmm. And it says, lean not exactly. unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him. Yes. And he shall direct thy yes. path. And the key is acknowledging him yeah. in all things. Exactly. And that's that's what we must do. Uh, and if someone is listening tonight and you this is news to you, you've never heard and and I know that there are people in this world who have truly never heard this wonderful account of the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. We think everybody's heard it, yeah. right. but do you know there are people who have never heard yes. this? If you are one of those people who have never heard what God did for mankind when he gave his son to come to this earth, and you don't know that he can be with you every step of the way in your life, I want to introduce him to you tonight. I want you to know that he is a friend that will stick by you uh, when it seems like it's just like Job. Job's mm -hmm. friends, mm -hmm. even though they were present with him, their heart and their mind had forsaken him. Mm -hmm. Yes. Truly. Yeah. But you may feel forsaken, but God and, and Jesus Christ, they will be with you. They will not leave you. They will not forsake you. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. must seek him and his will for your life. To bring you through these situations that may come up, um, my uh, my nephew uh, had worked for a company for twelve years, and um, that position disappeared. And he kept trying to get on to work for this particular company. Mm -hmm. He was qualified; he did well in the interviews, but for some reason, he never got hired. But then a better job came and he got that job mm -hmm. and yeah. looking back they understand yes you know mm -hmm. this this uh hindsight is always good but when you're in the middle of a storm mm -hmm. it's it's hard to look forward that's why you take one day at a time with jesus by your side and ask him lord i'm depending on you mm -hmm. whatever your will is for my life that's that is exactly where i want to be mm -hmm. And so I am here today to say, fear not. Um, I've got notes and I have not gone by any of them. Uh, let me see if there's anything I really need to say, okay? Um, I, I covered it pretty good. <laughs> okay, here's one. I said, God's promises are true and will come to pass in his time. Yes. Okay? The journey may not be what you thought. There could be hard times, rough times, scary times. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we must hold fast our faith 
in him and fear not. Amen. And that's Amen. what I have tonight. Amen. And I pray, I pray this will help somebody. Uh, you know, it's tough times out there. Mm -hmm. And you just may be facing, it, this Christmas time may not be what you wanted it to be. But if you find Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, it'd be your best Christmas. Right. And Amen. so I love Amen. you, and uh, I just want—I want you to know that I've got your back. Mm -hmm. If you need prayer, you call. Amen. 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 April. Well, glory. Well, the Lord. I just love Jesus the way He does Amen. things and how He orchestrates things. We never really share our notes. We right. just kind of maybe we'll share the, the the subject, the name of it, but that's it. But what the Lord, I asked if I could go last, and I'm so thankful I did because the Lord just thinks it's going to tie everything yes. together. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, if you uh, go with me to Luke chapter 2, I'm going to read some verses real quick to you. This just grabbed a hold of me today. This might not even have anything to do with what I'm going to end up on, but I just want to add to share before I burst. <laughs> start, let's start with verse 8. And it said, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord mm -hmm. shone round about them. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine that? And they were sore afraid. Yeah. <laughs> and the angel said, <laughs> Guess what he said? He it. said, Fear not, right. for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, joy. which shall be to all people will glory. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. And I looked that up, and it means a great deliverer. Hallelujah. Right. Which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And so Suddenly, listen to this, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host mm -hmm. praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Now, could you imagine being one of those shepherds and seeing an angel? Hmm. Uh, and it said, and the glory of the Lord shone right. Could you imagine seeing that? And then it said, a multitude of yeah, heavenly, heavenly hosts. hosts. And yeah. I looked it up and it said, even the, the angel army. All right. Mm. Oh, wow. Lord. Could you imagine? Sing, could you imagine the sound that came from that heavenly host? And could you imagine seeing that and them telling you tonight a, the Savior is born? And they said, and this will be a sign. Listen, it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, yeah. <laughs> of course they did. We got to go right now, even into Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste. They went running. <laughs> and they found Mary just like Jesus the angel said. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. They started telling everybody yes, what they had encountered, what they had seen, and what they heard. And it said, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But listen to this. All those other people wondered, hmm, mm -hmm. could you see him? Hmm. But Mary kept mm -hmm. all these things and pondered them in her heart. Mm -hmm. And I looked up that word pondered, oh, and it blew me away. And it's pondered means encountered. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, she encountered all of those things in her heart. <laughs> wow. Could you imagine? And I thought about that song. Everybody sings it every Christmas. Mary, mm -hmm. did you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> did you know that your baby boy mm -hmm. was Lord of all creation? Yeah. And did you know that one day he'd walk on water? Mm -hmm. Did you know that he would raise the dead? And I thought about that song, and I think the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. She knew. She knew. <laughs> wow. Because she encountered in her heart those things that were told by the angel, that the glory of the Lord that shone around. Mm -hmm. She she heard what they were saying, and she encountered that in her heart. No wonder she could say, be it to me according to your word no wonder she went later on when Jesus was about to do his first miracle and he said give me some barrels uh -huh. she said whatever he says you exactly. do it no wonder because she knew mm -hmm. so now I want to ask you a question that song Mary did you know Rhonda did you know 
Dana, did you know <laughs> that this same Jesus that we're talking about, that Mary carried in her womb, mm. oh, hallelujah, that we have the same Jesus on the inside sure. of us. Yes, yes we do. Hallelujah. <laughs> did you know? Hallelujah. And if you know me at all, you know what scripture I'm about to read you. I say it all the time, and I'll, <laughs> I'm, I never will... Uh, apologize for exactly. it. This is my theme yes. song. Amen. This is my anthem. It's Colossians chapter 1, right. verse 26 and 27. It says, Even the mystery uh -huh. which has been hidden from ages and mm -hmm. from generations, right. but now mm -hmm. is made manifest to his saints, yes. to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery mm -hmm. among the Gentiles, which is you and which is me. Yes. We're Gentiles. Right. This is the mystery. Christ in you, you the whole Lord. Lord. Yes. So, yes. whatever your, your name is, did you know? <laughs> did you know what's on the inside of you? Hallelujah. And when you have that revelation of what's on the, of who's on the inside of you, then we can fear not. Yeah, exactly. And so I exactly. thought about Mary. It said that she pondered this, that she encountered those things in her heart. And so I thought, this, this Christmas season, what can I give him? And I, I want to say, I want to give him my whole heart. Mm. My whole heart. I'm talking to some people that maybe you've been in church your whole life and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you're living for the Lord. But have you given him your whole heart? Mm -hmm. There's some secret uh, places. Yes. I, I, what I have is very, very short. But uh, I, I was thinking about, you know, there's all kind of different hearts. There's mm -hmm. people talk about broken hearts and uh, hard hearts and cold mm -hmm. hearts and tender yeah. hearts and mm -hmm. all these kind of hearts. But I want to talk to the broken hearted first. I know that this 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 Christmas especially I know I know there's been a lot of loss, mm -hmm. a lot of deaths yeah. that a lot of yeah. people have encountered. Mm -hmm. uh, even for me, I lost someone very very dear to me. She was my spiritual mother, and uh, it was hard. And it did break my heart. And I know I'm not the only one that's experienced that Miss Lisa lost her daddy this year. Just been a lot of loss. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of broken hearts, I think, this year for Christmas. Dana lost, mm -hmm. lost her mom. I tell you, we've just been a lot of loss. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you that I know this Jesus that we're talking about. Yes. Amen. He's the best cardiologist yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. ever been. Yes. Thank and I was one day I was having a bad day and I was so sad and I was missing I was missing Miss Elaine really bad. And I was thinking about her voice and I was thinking, man, I would just love to hear her voice one more time and I was thinking, I would just love to have one more hug from her, one more conversation. All those good things about her. And the Lord spoke something so sweet to me. Lord. He Thank said, Lord. Do you know? That all those good things in Missy Lane, it was really me. Mm -hmm. And you hadn't lost me and you hadn't lost her. Praise he's with God. us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, he's Praise with the us. Lord. All of those yeah. good things Thank is Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yes. This any good thing in us yes. is Jesus. Yes. Every good and perfect gift yes. that comes yes. from him. Anything good, it's anything, any love in us and anybody, it's him. So you be so comforted good. in that. Yes. Uh, I want to tell you. Put your broken heart in this box, like right. Dana said. Uh -huh. Put your whole heart. I'm just asking mm -hmm. for us all. I'm even asking the Lord to help me. I want to give every part of me, nothing, nothing holding back. I want to give everything that I am to mm -hmm. Jesus this coming year. And I don't even wait to January. I want to start today. Mm -hmm. Everything that I am, everything I have, I want to give my whole heart to Jesus. And um, and I thought about you know in hearts, uh, spiritual hearts. There's different compartments mm -hmm. and different rooms. Mm -hmm. And I I know that it was the Lord, Dana, that mm -hmm. you shared why you what you did what about forgiveness. You know, sometimes we can say, Okay, Jesus, you can have these certain rooms mm -hmm. of my heart. You, exactly. you come you more than welcome right. in the living room of my heart. Right. Right. <laughs> you welcome in the uh, Sunday morning mm -hmm. part of my heart. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Going to Sunday mornings and we, maybe Wednesday nights. You got that part, no problem. You have all you want. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But there's a little closet in the back. Okay, mm -hmm. Jesus, you people are, are you don't really say those words, but really you're acting like it. You you maybe you've got those grudges in that room. Now mm -hmm. I, you know I'm hanging on to that one. You can't come in that room. Uh, maybe you've got fear in another one that's been holding you back. Maybe you know that Jesus has been saying, okay, I've got some work for you to do. But you say, oh, okay, Jesus, mm, uh, you can't come in that room. <laughs> We've got these things, maybe these secrets. Prejudices. 
prejudice. Oh, yeah. uh, yes, all mm-hmm. kind of things. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> all kind of things. But there's a scripture the Lord showed me, and it's in Psalms 44, 21. It says, Shall not God search this out? For he knows mm-hmm. the secrets right. of the heart. He does. He does. And maybe you think, well, you've, you've kept it, you've tried your best to keep it secret from people, try to keep it hidden from people, but there's nothing, not mm-hmm. one thing that you can hide from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And I'm asking you to open up that door that you had those locks on and all those mm-hmm. deadbolt locks. Exactly. You've seen those people that are afraid and they've got like 10 deadbolt locks on that door. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlock. Starting looking all of those right. things because Jesus is knocking on that door of your heart and He's want to come in this Christmas season, even this day, even if you're watching a replay of this, Jesus is knocking at the at your heart's door, yes. wanting to come into every part. Mm-hmm. Nothing holding back. He doesn't want you held captive. Right. No, he doesn't. He doesn't want you living in fear. He doesn't want you living in captivity or addictions or anything of that. He wants us to give that heart to him. Yes, he does. Even tonight, he wants it. And I, you know, uh, I looking back over our uh, one, another lady that that we lost this year. She was precious to all of us, and it was uh, Sister Harrison yes. that we lost her. And I was thinking about her. Uh, I used to work at a, a, an insurance company, and she would come in. And she was, I loved it so much when she would come in because she was exactly the same mm-hmm. as when you saw her at church Sunday morning. Mm-hmm. She would, she never wavered. She never changed. Even right in that place of business, she would speak in tongues, prophesy over people. She did, didn't hold back one thing. Mm-hmm. And that all forever made an impact on me. Maybe there's some times where uh, you've been in Walmart and you you know, you didn't want to cut loose. Man, this year, I'm making it a go. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care where I'm at. If I I meant whatever the Lord has me to do, whether it's speak in tongues, prophesy, pray for people, lay hands, I don't care where I'm at. This year, I'm all in. I'm all in this year. So I just want to challenge you with that. Uh, to um, I'm going to ask you that question again. April, did you know what's on the inside of you? <laughs> the one that we're carrying on the inside of us. And also, when we have that revelation of who's on the inside of us, the authority, Jesus' authority, His power, His peace, His joy, all of those things, when we realize that that is indwelling in us, it says that we're the temple of the Holy Ghost. We're the temple. When you have that realization, that revelation of that, you will not want to do anything to make Him feel unwelcome. You will want to live holy. You will want to live righteous. You will want to please Him in everything that you say, do, uh, every part of it. You just need to have that revelation of who is on the inside of you. You need to give your whole heart. Don't hold any grudges, unforgiveness back. Don't walk in fear. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Yes, it hey, is. Now. Yes. <laughs> the Lord. Turn the lights off, people. <laughs> well, glory. Well, can I say so? Please, please. Uh, it has been revealed to me just in the last few weeks that when you totally surrender your whole life that's an act of trust yes it and is. it's an act of faith amen mm-hmm. and um i asked somebody that was trying to find the will of god for their life mm-hmm. and the question i asked that person was have you totally surrendered mm-hmm. your life and that person sat there for several seconds and finally, that person responded and said, I don't think I have. Mm. Mm-hmm. And until you're fully surrendered yes. every part of your life, yes. then you haven't trusted the Lord mm. yet Amen. with your whole being. Yes. Now, that's, that's hard words, Amen. but I believe that. And, and until you do, you trust Him with your whole heart. Yes. Not have any locked doors mm-hmm. as we were talking about. Trust Him with all of your heart. Amen. Then, 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 and and only then can you serve him as he has purpose for you to do. Amen. That's you know, my, and even, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And even Jesus himself. Let me just end with this this one scripture. This is Jesus speaking, Matthew twenty two and thirty seven. Jesus said unto him. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart Mm -hmm. and with all your soul and with all of your mind. So I'm asking you, maybe if if you've been 
serving Jesus a long time, but maybe you've fallen a little bit out of love with Jesus. I'm gonna, I want to challenge you to fall back in love with mm -hmm. Jesus, head over heels. I mean, uh, be eat up with it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's find our passion for Jesus to serve the Lord with all that's within us this coming year. And I tell you, we're going to see things, law, we never even dreamed of. Right. We're going to see God do more wonderful, miraculous things right. in our lives. Amen. Also, before we pray, I just want to say there were some people we had been praying for, mm -hmm. and this week I have just gotten the most wonderful testimonies of, of healing people, God working out situations in the most it was impossible Amen. with man but Jesus God moves in the body so we're just Praise we're just God. rejoicing yes, with our friends for those testimonies yes. and so we want to pray with you of course before we go um, if there's any request uh, uh, please send those to us and we will pray Amen. We don't ever just say we're going to and not do it. We really, we really do pray for you, and we're just so thankful that we see God moving every time. We're so thankful for that. So, all right. We have people that have uh, lost loved ones in the last few months yes. that request prayer, and uh, we thank God that He is the consoler, Amen. and that there's a peace that yes. He brings Amen. that causes us to overcome not only the grief. Yes. Uh, and work through that, mm -hmm. but to causes us to be able to help somebody else. Yes, amen. amen. Absolutely. Right. Right. Yeah. He said his name should he be the wonderful counselor, the <laughs> mighty peace. God, yes. everlasting Father, yes. the Prince of Peace. Yes. Oh, that's who he is. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank We're you, going to pray Jesus. for those ones. Yes, ma'am. There's anybody else, Miss Emily? She's going to pray. All right. Well, let's pray. Jesus, we Lord love you. God in heaven, I love you so we much. thank you, Father God, that you thank are the you Word made flesh and dwelt among us, God. We thank you, Father, that your Word is true. Your Word is faithful, Lord, God. It will not return void. We thank you, Father, that your Word is true. Your Word is faithful, God. It will not return void. Lord, I pray, God, for part of our quiz, God, these ones that are hurting, Father, these ones that are suffering loss. Lord, I pray that the Holy Ghost will stand up within them, comfort them, and hold them in a mighty way. Lord, I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, speaker, Father, we just speak peace, God, and joy over their lives, Lord. Let them look back on the good memories and be thankful, God, for those, Lord. And let them look forward, God, to the hope that we have that we'll see you again, Lord. I pray, God, right now, that you would heal the broken, Father, the ones that have held these unforgiveness and bitterness in their hearts. Lord, I thank you, God, for courage, God, to make the decision to let that go, Father, to give you that those things, Father, not to hold back, God. I pray that you help us, God. Dan and Nicole Horton request that we pray for her. She has to go back on campus and take a Math 98 class. And she's nervous about going going back to campus. So let's just speak peace to her. Yes, Lord, we speak for Miss Miss Horton. God, we speak peace yes, to her right Lord, now, Father. Peace, Lord, I thank you, Father God, Sweet that, that peace, Lord, it would guard her heart and her mind, Father. It would be a, a security guard around her, Father, that your peace, God, would you be renew her mind, Father. Let her have a excitement instead of dread, Father. I pray that you would help her to put on that, that test, God, in that class, Father. Give her your wisdom, Father. We thank you. start that tradition and just take some time and write out what you're going to give to Jesus this year. That's so Amen. good. Amen. Amen. Well, we sure do love you. Amen. So, when will we be back, ladies? Lord's Tuesday. Tuesday night, Lord willing, yes. Same time, <laughs> 7 o'clock. <laughs> we'll see you then.